Yakin needs urgent medical help, but she can't get it here in the Rukban camp in southeast Syria. Her parents have taken to social media to ask for help, so far without success. Blockaded by the Syrian government since 2018, the thousands of displaced people living in Rukban feel they have been largely forgotten by the world. Located along a demilitarized zone close to the border between Jordan and Iraq, the only way out is the territory under the control of the Syrian regime. For many, including Yakin's parents, who are members of the opposition Free Syrian Army, leaving is not an option. We have an unknown fate. We don't know what will happen tomorrow. We are afraid that the blockade will be tightened even further. For years, we have been appealing for safe passage to another country or opposition-controlled territory in the north. Harsh conditions at the camp are why tens of thousands left over the years, even if it meant returning to government areas without guarantees they'd be safe. Human rights groups have documented dozens of those who've returned being detained and tortured. We don't know how to help them. And the UN, and the, the, uh, even UN uh, doesn't uh, promise them that they are changed, they are the, uh, an end to this uh, disaster. Uh, so th they want a solution. Uh, uh, be they want to, to, uh, to, uh, to move uh, to another area. For years, the only lifeline for the estimated eight to 10,000 people there has been smuggling routes that some aid agencies use to bring in basic supplies like water. The last time the government in Damascus allowed the United Nations to deliver aid was in 2019. It has been accused of using aid as a weapon of war and a tactic to starve people into submission. We live a difficult life, very bad living conditions. We lack the basic necessities, including water. We are thirsty. We walk four to five kilometers to get a kilo of rice for our kids. We are not living. Cries for help are not new, but they're growing louder as conditions and options only worsen for those left inside. Dana Khudr, Al Jazeera.